Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel, Michael Claire to Art. So this morning, um, we're going to be doing something that we've done in the past. Uh, you know that this channel does a myriad of things, from drawing tutorials, to warm-ups, to illustration tutorials. Uh, also, we do product reviews. So I'm just coming off of a couple product reviews. Um, if you look in the history uh, of the videos that I have, uh, especially in terms of recent, I've done lamp reviews. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I've done lamp reviews. I've done um, computer reviews, you know, Samsung, Surface Pro, Surface Laptop Studio, uh, different drawing tablets from XP Pen to Huion to uh, a company called Yugi. Um, some of you don't know, but Yugi is an emerging branding here in the United States. Um, they're pretty prevalent overseas in Asia and and in and, uh, and that whole area in Europe. Uh, Yuki is actually the parent company of XB Pen. So they own uh, XB Pen. And they also uh, parent uh, another company that I've done uh, reviews on the channel for, and that is Sense Labs. So Yugi uh, and their technology and their, uh, and their uh, tablets are starting to develop as a resource uh, and a source for artists looking to be digital, um, you know, digital artists and digitally minded. Uh, I did uh, a review of their uh, existing, I believe I've reviewed two of their tablets previous, and you can see some of those reviews down in the uh, description. But today we're going to be doing um, a review of their U1200 pen display tablet. So they sent me this tablet um, recently and they said, hey, Mike, we really enjoyed your, <laughs> enjoyed your uh, you know, your explanation of our product, would you be interested in doing a pen display tablet review? And I said, heck yeah, I love pen displays. That's actually the primary way that I do my professional illustration work is a pen display. For those of you who are not familiar with pen displays, um, there's a, a, a myriad of companies that make these uh, out there at different price points and at different technical specifications and you know <clears throat> um as a digital artist i'm very attuned to what is good <laughs> right we're all looking as digital artists to find out what is good we spend our money on these products we want them to last and we want them to do exactly what they're advertising whether it's pressure curve pressure sensitivity ease of operation durability screen um, resolution, uh, screen brightness, and all of these really come down to a form factor that, uh, you know, I look at and say, is it a good product for, you know, my viewers um, to purchase? So Yugi is one of those fun companies that, uh, again, <laughs> they, they make a good product, but also they partner um, with good companies and they have... Uh, you know, the, the children companies, they are the parent company, and they're developing, like I said, as a resource for those that are ready to start or continue on the creative journeys. So, this particular display is a 12 inch display. So, 12 inch being comparable to an iPad um, or possibly, you know, maybe a, a, a Surface device or Samsung or one of those devices. Now, this particular device is not a standalone, and that needs to be noted because there are a lot of companies out there that are making standalone tablets. You're welcome. And I did hear recently that Huion is starting to get into the standalone market, which is fantastic. They're going to be manufacturing a couple of uh, new tablets. Um, but this is a tablet that you would attach to a host machine and uh, then you would draw on the surface of this device. You can see that it's got a picture right here on the front that shows um, kind of what it is. It's a pen display tablet. So you would draw directly on the surface of the pen display um, to, uh, you know, to make art. So the display resolution is 1920 by 1080. It's got 127% uh, of uh, sRGB gamut resolution color saturation, um, it's got a 90% NTSC and 94% Adobe RGB. So I've, I've noted those numbers and I've spat those numbers out because it's important for those of you who work in the Adobe world, you, you know, you work in, uh, 
in Adobe apps such as Photoshop, Illustrator, and Lightroom, and some of those other apps, um, possibly Fresco. They have color books on the inside of them. The Pantone color books, um, you know, True Tone, Pantone, and some of those other uh, color industry standards that we as artists refer to whenever we create products or we need color matching for specific, specific characters. Um, you know, you look uh, across the board and you're always wondering, or at least I do, how they color match the different characters from different companies because you don't have one company making a toy you have a myriad of companies making the same toy or the same character and they all have to color match so that that gamut that that spectrum of color is what i'm referring to whenever i say um adobe rgb so your color is going to be or your monitor is going to be uh calibrated to the adobe rgb color gamut and whenever you match the file to it then the colors will match across the board if that makes sense okay and then we have full lamination so lamination is very important because it is the distance between the lcd screen and the outside protective coating uh, or plastic that is above the lcd um back in the day even three years ago four years ago five years ago and some existing tablets don't have full lamination that's when the uh, outside uh, plastic is bonded to the lcd screen or you're actually drawing on the led or lcd screen itself the lamination is important because the distance creates what's called parallax the distance between the end of your pen and the actual uh, LED or LCD screen where the cursor is, that distance is called parallax. And whenever you're drawing, it's a disconnect. So the lamination actually eliminates or limits the amount of uh, distance that is from those two entities. Um, it's got 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity and the stylus is battery free. 5,080 um, LPI, like I said, with 1920 by 1080 resolution. Um, it is Mac compatible as well as PC compatible and I believe and this is something that some of the companies are starting to do now with that um, with the USB-C you can plug it into a Samsung device or something that runs Android and you'll be able to run it off your cell phone I'm not sure if that is what this one does but that seems to be kind of where things are going uh, I don't believe you can do that with a Mac uh, such as an iPad or an iPhone Maybe that'll change in the future, but right now it is what it is. Um, it does have a uh, tilt. It just says it has tilt. It doesn't indicate what the degree of tilt. Most of them are 40 to 60 degrees of tilt, and hopefully um, it does have. And it does say digital eraser, so we're going to look at the pen to see if it has an eraser on the end. A lot of pens don't have that. They have just the button on the barrel that um, activates the eraser. Um, and we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing and get started with the illustration test. So those of you who wonder why this review is as long as it is, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, I just don't do a line test and a simple overview. I go deeper into the process of setting the device up, examining all the areas of the device from the unboxing to the packaging to the cables to the pen technology and I evaluate and really compare it to some of the other items that I have um, used in the past. I've been an illustrator now for over 20 years uh, professionally. I design toys. I've worked for Disney, for Nintendo, for Lucasfilm, Warner Brothers, Universal Studios, Pixar. Um, I've designed a lot of toys. I've designed a lot of illustration, created a lot of art uh, for you know the commercial um, and retail uh, markets. Uh, for consumers so i kind of know a little bit more about tablets than your average joe and i go in and actually use the tablet the way that you would and that's important to note here in the beginning because some of you will look at this video and say man it's an hour i, I mean come on it's just a review of a stinking tablet well whenever you're spending money on tablets like this it's important to get the best evaluation um of the product and I'm, I'm i'm not the only stop right i remember looking at videos and going this video has this component but it doesn't have this component it has this component but not this component they did a line test but they didn't actually show me the illustration they did uh an overview but they they didn't ex explain why so that's what i'm interested in knowing is is this tablet a good tablet for you as an illustrator graphic artist 
3D sculptor to purchase um, and, and evaluate it with some of the more expensive tablets. Um, some of the tablets out there can cost as much as, you know, 800, 900, 1,000, 2,000 to 3,000 to 4,000 dollars. And whenever you're looking at a product that expensive, it makes me wonder, especially me, because, you know, money's important to me. Um, it, it makes me wonder why something is that expensive when you have other tablets that are much cheaper and you say, well, it's it's the fact that this company's been around, you know, and they were the inventor of the technology. And, and I think that's great. But I think in today's market and today's competitive um, marketing and also uh, manufacturing processes, a lot of these tablets have the same technology in them. So this has very similar technology to like your Wacom, like your XP Pen, like your Sense Labs, like your Huion. So you need to evaluate why this one's going to make a difference and should be added to your artistic um, repertoire. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing. Let's go ahead and get started. And uh, hopefully you'll stick around for the illustration demo and I'll do a little bit of talking. You know how I like to talk, so enjoy. And here we are. Here's the lovely box. So pretty simple. Um, you know, a lot of companies will just utilize a brown box, which I think is okay. But I love whenever companies actually put artwork on the dis on the uh, outside uh, of the box itself with the branding. Um, and I love just the unification of a lot of the uh, you know stuff that Yugi's doing right now. They're going through a rebranding process, and that's part of the illustration that we're going to go through today is the rebranding of Yugi. Um, very excited that they're doing that. Uh, going to have some new character illustrations today. Um, you know, here on the box it shows you know the uh, the sizing, also that it has tilt digital eraser. And the pixel density being 1920 by 1080 uh, full HD. And then it has very similar to XP Pen um, the specifications on the back. I love that. And uh, just for the um, you know the environment conscious, they do have a user manual if you want to scan that with your cell phone. It's the um, the code here, and it takes you to the online uh, user manual so you can do things and set things up. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. Looks like a clamshell box. Get rid of the cellophane here. <clears throat> Another thing that I love is the use of matte, um, you know, matte packaging. Matte being not shiny, not too dull. It has a slight sheen to it, and the uh, printing is really crisp, and I love that. Okay, opening this up, let's go ahead and do this, and the cushion here, which I love, I love these, I use these in different areas, um, you know, whenever I'm drawing and stuff, I might put my hand on it, or if I'm doing a display, this is always handy dandy, and it protects the screen. So let's go ahead, and we're going to remove the tablet itself really quick and place it to the side. And we're gonna look at some of the peripheral items. Here's the cables, I'm very familiar with this. It looks very, again, very similar to what XP Pen includes with their tablets. Um, that three-in-one with a power cable. So the power cable right here, if you don't wanna connect just via um, USB-C, because it does have an HDMI cable here, which I think is interesting. HDMI, even though a great technology, you know, a lot of the companies are going towards USB-C. So this being a new tablet, and a lot of the companies out there um, in the computers going to USB-C, I believe this HDMI cable uh, is a little, I don't know, outdated. I think that overall, you know, even though we do see the connector here, so this is the connector to the computer tablet. This is the USB that connects um, to the computer itself, and then here's the power cable, and here's the power cable extension. So I believe this is what's gonna be plugged into your uh, computer. And unfortunately, if that's the truth, what's gonna end up happening, if I can find it, there we go. What's gonna end up happening is you're gonna have to have one of these. So this is what's known as a dongle, and it's got a HDMI port on it, 
and it's got a USB uh, 3.2 that I would plug the other cable into. Um, and this plugs into the side of my current either Surface device or my Samsung device. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use. Um, so, yeah, that is... We're just going to have to see. I, I'll, I'll go ahead and scan the, um, the little code and go to the manual. Maybe I can hook up a USB-C to it. We will determine that here in a moment. But first we're going to open up this, which does have a warranty card and it does have a glove as well. So let's go ahead and look. So if you open this up, you can see it's got the pen nibs, which is really nice. It's got quite a few of them. Um, I always wonder, I'm like, am I going to ever really use that many pen nibs? So these are softer. You will go through these. I mean, I've gone through an entire set of the pen nibs. And what happens with the pen nibs, and this is something that you're going to find out whenever you start using a lot of these tablets, these pen nibs are soft. They're soft for a reason because, first of all, you don't want them to scratch the surface of the screen. Second, you want them, it, it is a, uh, a consumable, so eventually I'll go through all of these and then I'll have to purchase more, which is revenue for the company. But uh, the most important thing is they're soft enough to where they don't scratch the screen. And that's that to me is really, um, you know, really a good thing. And then it's got an eraser and that's, that's to note too. So the eraser um, is not something that comes on all the pens and it has a two function uh, button on the barrel, which is really nice. Now the weight of the pen, yeah, it's average. It's about the size of a normal pen. One thing I don't like, and this is something that is personal preference. I don't know if you're like this or not, but you see how this comes to a very abrupt taper. Um, I'm not really keen on that. Just to compare and contrast, here's the barrel pen from the Samsung, um, uh, Galaxy Book 2 360. You see how it goes a little bit more of a taper than this one. The more taper that I get, the better, because ultimately what I'm really comparing it to is what I'm used to. This is a long taper, so I've got lo a long, uh, you know, a bigger nib here on the pencil, and with that wood exposed, it gives me a nice taper to put it over on its edge and really get nice shading. So what's going to happen here is whenever I go to place it on its edge, I'm going to run into the edge of the barrel here on the end. And I'm not, I don't, that's a personal preference. If, you know, if you like that, then that's you. But me, I'm not too keen on that. Um, the barrel is round, but it does have flat surface areas to where it doesn't roll off the desk. I love that. And it's got a DBoss logo right here. It's not printed. So a lot of them are printed and they do wear off. Um, so they did spend some time with the technology here on the pen. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and open the bag, the plastic bag. Can't tell you how many gloves I have now, which I love. I like the gloves. Let's go ahead and get rid of the knife so I don't cut myself. We'll get the pen back in its cubby. We'll place this on its side. It does come with a pen nib remover, which is really nice. And this is a budget-minded uh, tablet. Budget-minded meaning it's it's right in that sweet spot. So let's go ahead and look up Yugi U1200 pen display on Amazon. Because that's probably where most of you are going to go. Or if you go to yugi.com. So let's go ahead and U-G-E-E -E, U1200. So this one retails... Okay, retails for $195. So this is the V4, the U1600, which is the 16 inch size. So you can get a 16 or you can get a 12 inch. I per personally, preference wise, I like the 16, but the 12 inch will do just great for those of you that don't want a larger tablet. You could put this in a bag, you could put this you know, in uh, in an area um, for travel, and it will treat you very nice. So, here's the, the glove. Gloves, good quality. The quick guide, the warranty policy, and, of course, the lovely 
little wipey. <laughs> I don't know if that's a technical term. It's a wipey. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can see it's got 613 reviews so far, and uh, it's just, it, it, so far, I mean, it seems like a really good uh, tablet. It does say connectivity technology, USB, and HDMI. So we're going to find that out here in just a moment. You know, I always like to go in also and just see how their advertising is. So it shows you the different color gamut explanations, full lamination, anti-glare. Uh, we're going to get to that here in just a second. It's got 178 degrees uh, wide view of, uh, you know, of viewing. So whenever you go to the side of it, it's not going to phase out. And a lot of the tablets back in the day used to phase out when you weren't looking directly at them. Um, so yeah, it says you could basically connect it to your phone, so watch video, you can game on it, which is cool. I don't know why you would buy this tablet to game on, it doesn't make any sense, um, but you can. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and look at the tablet itself. Yeah, I'm very familiar. This is very familiar territory with me since I do a lot of reviews. Overall, the weight. Let's talk about the weight. This is something that you could probably carry, you know, it, it's, I don't know, probably less than a pound, maybe a pound. Um, let's go ahead and remove the... You guys know how I love that sound. Oh, yeah. I'm not a fan of that sound. Plastic in general. That and wire hangers. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Wire hangers, um, even plastic hangers I'm not a fan of. Okay, so, man, this is really nice. I'm not seeing any gaps at all in the plastic. So a lot of times I'll see, maybe in the manufacturing process, you'll see a, a raised portion of the screen. Um, I am seeing a little bit of bend. Now, if you see this right here, you see how it bends just slightly, and that might be it could be a myriad of things. I'm not really sure. I flip it over, and you've got these rubber pads. Um, it is plastic. It's not metal, and the application of the decals is nice, and the plastic is high quality. It's not cheap garbage, and it's tapered on the ends, so whenever you go to pick it up, you're not having to scrape and scrimp. It's designed to where you can pick it up. Um, so it does not have a stand, and that's important to note because the reality is, is I don't draw like this. I draw like this. And it is kind of, uh, it is challenging because even though I own stands, you know, I'd probably utilize something like this, right? And then have it right here. I mean, that works, but this is another cost. I mean, I, they're trying to keep the cost down. You know, if you were to add a stand, it'd probably add another $15, $10, $15. But, you know, based on the quality that I see, I would definitely pay that extra money, even to have it engineered into the back of the item itself. So, I'm going to go ahead and peel off the plastic film. Yeah, that's real nice. Okay, so, this is important to note. Full lamination. It also has, uh, it's not shiny. You can see how it's not shiny. And that's important because of the anti-glare uh, applied film that's on it. So one of the things I like to do is to, oh yeah, definitely, lots of fingerprints. So we're gonna have lots of fun with uh, wiping the uh, screen itself. So then we have, let's look to see the items on the edge. So here is the, um, looks like the USB. Okay, so it shows you, it's got little uh, debossed or um, embossed uh, icons. This is for the tri-cable. Um, and this is for a single USB C. Now it's important to note, this is important because I didn't know this, not all USB C cables are made the same. Some are just for uh, power and data transfer. They have to be, that third component has to be there for this to work. It has to be video capable. So just know if you're going to utilize this, um, and connecting it to your phone, that USB-C cable has to be video capable. Because if you just hook up a, a standard USB-C cable to it, it will not work. And it is frustrating that they didn't include that cable. Um, 
But on the other hand, again, it has to do with price point, it has to do with understanding your market. Most people will have a USB-C cable somewhere that supports video, and that's important to know too. So this is the brightness right here and the power button. So let's go ahead and get this hooked up and set up. Um, yeah, I definitely lots, and my hands aren't greasy. My hands are typically pretty dry. And it, it definitely, you got all kind of fingerprints all over this thing. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's get started. So here I am installing the driver uh, into the um, Samsung device. Uh, right now, I'm, <laughs> this is something that I don't like. Uh, I see a ton of cables. So here's the tri cable. I've got the cable going into the device, and then I've got a secondary cable that goes from the tri connection uh, over to the side of the device, um, of the host machine. And then I have, just so I can adjust the brightness on the tablet, I've got a third cable going into a power source. Um, so, man. You know, I think that it is a personal preference. I like having the least amount of cables coming from the device. Now, from the device itself, it just has the one. You're like, oh, that's very clean. So I'm going to have to use some cable wranglers to clean up this desk mess that this cable has um, created. So let's go ahead and do that and finish installing the driver. Okay, so I wanted to take a moment because I'm right in the middle of installing drivers and making sure everything is good to go uh, across the board. And I've run into an issue. So those of you who have been on my channel before, you know that I like using the XP Pen remote um, that is uh, uh, connected via a dongle. And um, unfortunately, what I've run into is because Yugi is the parent company of XP Pen, uh, you can't run two drivers at the same time. It seems that one driver is newer than the other or one is updated, uh, uh, you know, this says copyright 22, 2022, whereas uh, <laughs> the, uh, the XP pen, whenever I went to go and install the driver for this particular remote, it indicated that the old version is still uh, on the system, which is the latest and greatest Yugi uh, driver for the pen tablet. So I can't use my XB pen quick remote because unfortunately the driver specific for this particular monitor um, doesn't recognize that I have the um, the pen remote connected to it. Now I've used Yugi pen tablets before but not a display tablet and it recognized the the uh, the remote no problem so that is a problem for me so unfortunately I may have to switch to a different um, pen remote because I utilize the pen remote whenever I'm doing my uh, work because I don't have a keyboard in front of me so I'm gonna try a couple different things and hopefully I can get things resolved but that is unfortunate that I can't use my pen remote um, with the pen display tablet that is so far not a great thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click out of that I'm gonna hit OK and what it's gonna do is it's gonna install the XB pen remote driver um, over the Yugi uh, display tablet driver so we're gonna see yeah so right now it doesn't work anymore because it's in the process of installing it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't get this resolved. And this is the first little hiccup that I've had um, with the pen display. So let's let's make sure that we're we're doing everything correctly. Sometimes you know there is something called user error, user error, and I want to make sure that I that I exhaust all possible avenues because I really this is something I utilize across the board, multiple computers, because all I have to do is, you know, plug it in. So let's go ahead and see if I can't get it to work. Okay, so I was able to solve the driver issue. And this, of course, is something that you probably would not know if you weren't um, knowledgeable about the tablets and how they work and who owns them and the parent companies and everything else. So 
I know that Yugi is the parent company of XB Pen, so um, I could not get my XB Pen remote to show up in the Yugi driver um, window. And that is unfortunate because I uninstalled the other driver, the Yugi driver, and I installed the XP pen driver because I want to make sure and be able to use this um, use this asset whenever I work because I like to program the quick keys and it's got a nice scroll wheel that enlarges enlarges is that a word that makes the brush larger and smaller and I can zoom in and out and it's just a really great companion um, so I went ahead and installed the driver for the XP pen and lo and behold it recognized the Yugi U1200 um, tablet and uh lo and behold there is my wonderful <laughs> my wonderful quick key remote so if you own this then just know that uh you can install the xp pin driver and it will work with the yugi u1200 uh, tablet and i was able to go in and do the calibration uh for this particular tablet and uh, adjust the pin settings no problem and I can export the configuration which is really nice um, for this particular tablet so the brightness so uh, I'm a little I don't, I don't want to say disappointed but this is something that again at this particular price point you know we talked about how it's not you know a twenty five thousand dollar tablet or something like that ridiculous or even three four hundred dollar tablet at this particular price point um, you know, $195 and you can actually, I mean, you could save $30, um, if you get a coupon, uh, they have coupons on Amazon all the time, or if you go on the Yugi website, I'm sure that they also have sales. So at $195, true 1920 by 1080p, um, resolution, uh, laminated screen with anti-glare, then you get 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity with an eraser and a barrel button. Um, it doesn't have touch, but that's okay. Um, it not being a pro device, you're not going to have any quick keys on the left or right. But at the end of the day, you know, if you were to pick up something like this, it's probably about 35, uh, 30 to $35. And man, I'm just, I'm very impressed so far with the fact that it's got a laminated screen, it's got anti-glare, and the pen is really responsive. I mean, after I got it calibrated, wonderful. So I like to use uh, Adobe Photoshop whenever I do tests because it's got a great uh, pen rendering engine uh, in it that has a uh, really good response. Depends on your host machine too, and the host machine that I'm utilizing is a Samsung device with an Evo i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, 512 SSD with uh, shared graphics. It's the newest, latest, and greatest Samsung uh, or, uh, Galaxy Book 360. So I know that the um, the speed of the machine is going to really help in, you know in the speed of the drawing process. So where these tablets, and I'm just giving a broad stroke of what I've experienced, where these tablets tend to have issues is not in the speed of the drawing, right? So we're drawing, we're drawing, we're drawing, you know, we're drawing, maybe we're doing a creature and he's going to have some big fangs and he's going to have, you know, <clears throat> and this is just literally testing the pen technology and the screen technology. I'm going to be getting into the drawing demo in just a minute. I'm just trying to show you that most of the tablets that I've tested, you know, there's that blink. Again, the, and I've said this in other videos, that blink has nothing to do with the tablet or the machine. It is a Photoshop uh, Windows anomaly. Like if I were, you see the blink and has stopped. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of drawing here so you know that we are serious about drawing. Okay. Things coming out. I'm gonna have a here, here. I'm going to have that here. We'll be able to see that other eye. And I'm doing this to show you. Most of the time, the anomaly does not occur whenever you have it in full screen. Where the blinking anomaly occurs, 
is typically in this configuration where you have the menus here and the blink see it's blinking and it, again that is not the yugi tablet that is a windows photoshop issue you know i know for a fact the machine is super fast so it's not a video card it's happened on every <laughs> every tablet that i've owned a uh, computer uh, windows computer so far that i've owned so just know if you're having the same anomaly it is a Adobe uh, Windows uh, issue. Because it doesn't happen whenever you go full screen. Anyway, so you're seeing the pressure curves really nice whenever I draw fast. You're not seeing any major tapering. You know, we're going to go ahead and zoom. Oop, I can't do that. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in. <laughs> I'm so used to drawing on touch devices. So the pressure curve is really nice. I have it taper on. So let's go ahead and do taper off so we're getting a nice light pressure curve as I zoom in again I use a textured brush because it taxes the um, the machine a little bit more and any anomalies will show up really prevalent and really plain so first we're gonna do the horizontal test we're gonna press hard and then light, light, so we're going to go light, hard, light. Now what I am noticing is it doesn't have as good of a feel as some of my other devices. Now this is really, that is probably almost a perfect pressure curve because you have the lead in, which is the, um, the initial activation of the pencil. The stylus on the screen is okay. It's not amazing. So if I were to just come in, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, that's pretty normal. So if I were to go in and really, I'm just really gonna touch the screen, I'm not getting anything. Maybe a little bit here and there. Okay. I'm getting some blotching, but I'm sure, again, that has to there's a lot of variables going on right here and this is something that I think a lot of people over glance and they're like it's it's the tablet problem it's the user error it's the pen problem so on the Samsung devices you cannot adjust a global pressure curve okay it is using a WinTab driver with Wacom technology okay for its screen so whenever I install this driver and I'm using this tablet now I have two technologies on the same machine, right, that are activated. So if I were to use my S Pen and I were to go and draw on the screen, you see how much different that is? And I'm just barely touching. Again, I'm getting two, two variables happening. And even in the midst of those variables, the uh, Yugi slash XP Pen driver is still working very well. I'm barely touching the screen with the pen, and I'm gonna go a little bit more, a little bit more, and we're gonna go full pressure. That's full pressure. Then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna start lessening. Less, less, less and finally nothing so you can see that the pressure curve is very good right where these machines tend to have issues and the tablets tend to have issues is the diagonal test and what will happen you'll see some wobble but there is no wobble with this pen what you're seeing is my hand you know just a little bit of handshake here and there. So let's go ahead. We're going to get rid of the texture brush. We're going to go to a solid brush, something that comes with Photoshop. Hard, round, pressure, size. And we're going to put the taper on. So right now, the harder I push, the darker it will be and the bigger the brush will be. The pressure curve is absolutely phenomenal. So 
where would an issue come up? So if I was drawing, drawing, now you, you get something called shoelacing. Shoelacing happens and you're seeing a little bit of the shoelacing on this machine, okay, or on this particular tablet. So whenever the pressure curve comes and it's really hard, 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 and then you have an abrupt right there because I'm pulling back on the pressure. It's actually not too bad. This is probably one of the worst ones right here. You can see it right there. So you'll see that little bit of a, it'll come, 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 and then boom, it'll stop. See, it's not gonna happen if I've got a nice even pressure that's linear. But if I go in and I push and then I pull, so you're gonna see that, okay? You're gonna see it on the onset and you're gonna see it on the exit. And most of the time it happens on brushes that don't have texture or brushes, uh, you know, maybe a Photoshop brush that is, that is uh, you know, solid like an airbrush or something like that. So that is not great, but I don't draw like that. I don't, I mean, the only time that I would draw like that is if I have fur. So maybe I have a fur brush and I'm drawing some fur. Let's go ahead and draw some fur. Let's get rid of the blink. Okay. See, just putting a little bit of fur here and there. And I'm not, say a little bit of, not really a lot of, sh there's no shoelacing that's happening because I'm not, I'm not doing things to cause that to happen. So if I go in, I'm going to make this darker. Okay, so I'm seeing, okay, so like right there. See that, that little item right there. This obviously is something, I mean, look how small that is. This is something that the tablet companies are currently working on, and I'm sure that, you know, some of the com some of the tablet companies have it. Some of the tablet companies do not. Right? I'm sure it has to do with the pen communicating with the digitizer and then allowing for that gradual pull of that pressure curve and reading your input as you progress through the drawing. Right? So if I were to go in, let's go back here. And this is important. I want to know stuff like this. I want to know how bad the shoelacing is, how good the shoelacing, if there's any shoelacing at all, um, and what the uh, you know what the the variables are when it comes to this particular uh, tablet. So right now, whenever I'm drawing, I can feel a little bit of the of the. Uh, of the texture, which is fine. Now, since it's not touch, I'm not wearing my glove, and if I don't want a bunch of uh, a bunch of fingerprints on there, obviously I can use the glove, and the glove helps whenever I'm drawing and it makes things a little bit faster. So, let's go to my favorite brush. It's the pastel C brush. So this is the way I would typically draw. So this is my. Let's go ahead. Let's do a. Let's do a. Get rid of that. So you can see as I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. I'm not really concentrating on the brush stroke per se. What I'm actually doing is I'm thinking about form. Finger here, finger here. Okay. Here's the other finger. This finger comes out. Here, here, here. Okay. I'm just literally having some fun here showing you how I would in the speed that I typically would draw at to show you that you know whenever it comes to certain anomalies that certain tablets have you know the shoelacing some of the you know the pressure issues and pressure curve issues I draw in such a way that it doesn't really affect me but I know that some of you draw slower and that's completely fine Right? So we're going, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give him some horns. Okay. 
And we're going to get into the drawing demo here in a second. But I'm just trying to show you, even though it does have slight shoelacing, it's not something that is going to affect me. It's going to have the smiley, smiling. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. And basically I'm just showing you. Okay, so now we're going to go. I need to get rid of the tape off that brush. Okay. Nice pressure curve overall, getting some nice light pressure from the brush. Let's go ahead and darken that in. <clears throat> go ahead and put the taper back on. For those of you who follow me on my channel, this is <laughs> this is my uh, my personal character. We're going to be working on Yugi's characters here in just a moment. This is my personal character, Freddy. He's a Yeti. And I've I've done tons of illustration with him. But I just wanted to show you that even though there is slight shoelacing here and there, it doesn't inhibit me from creating the... <clears throat> the image. And in fact, the feel of the brush is absolutely phenomenal. So let's go ahead and do one more thing here before I go ahead and make this a little bit larger. We're gonna go, we're gonna also we're gonna look at the tilt really quick. <clears throat> here we go. Here's the brush. Shape dynamics. We're gonna go to tilt. Okay, and this shows you that it does have. Probably 60 degrees of tilt, I would surmise. Yeah, 60 degrees. But we can get nice directional tilt. Yeah, look at that. Wonderful! At a $193, guys, an HD laminated tablet with 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. I mean, ten, five years ago, this was not possible. Not at this price point. So, Yugi has definitely done their homework and created a phenomenal unit at that particular price. For those of you who are looking for a, a tablet that you can use at school, you can use on the run, and, uh, you know, still have all the capabilities of the big boys and the really expensive tablets, but not at that huge price point that most of us, to be honest, most of us can't afford <laughs> your $3,000 tablets. So let's go ahead and start on the uh, the characters <clears throat> that uh, Yugi is interested in, uh, in me doing. You know, whenever they sent me the tablet, and they're like, yeah, we'd like you to use these characters, and we're doing a whole rebanding thing. I'm like, awesome, and the characters are really cute. So we're going to kind of go through and explain who they are and what they represent, and I'm excited. So I get distracted, and here I am drawing the whole time, and sorry about that. Let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually create an illustration for the Yugi Company utilizing their new character set so just like with any good company they go through different evolutions of direction and a lot of times you have the old company which was great and then they want to introduce new lively uh, direction to the new company um, look and you know whether it's a design of logo whether it's new colors whether it's a new name, whether whatever, whatever it is. The marketing plan basically is to introduce these new characters as part of the Yugi vision. 
And honestly, I think they're fantastic. This one is uh, UU, and this one is GG. Pretty simple, right? Yugi. Um, I think that, uh, you know, these are super cute characters. And, you know, me being an illustrator and logo designer, um, and one who likes character in general, can look at these and understand why they designed them the way that they did. So this one, uh, Yu Yu, it indicates uh, full of energy, excellent drawing ability, playing video games as a hobby, and he's funny, lively, and active, self-aware, and very noisy. So that, you know, energetic, it, it just shows, you know, they want to imbue some type of relational uh, element into their products, because let's be honest, tablets are a little cold <laughs> and you know as far as a user goes you want to introduce some type of character type to uh, tell a story so then you have the other character which is typically a contrast most of the time you have the lively character who is full of energy very colorful loud and then you have the reserved character so this character being red being very contrasty very lively and in shape of a heart again shows you know that love element um and then you have this character which is gg and in blue it says characteristic cold outside but hot inside so he's very passionate drawing and writing encyclopedias um that's his ability so he's te on the technical side and then his hobby is reading comics studying drawing related materials and his personality is very kind rational strong empathy Sentimental, nagging, sensitive, and slow to warm up. So you have uh, you have two different character types that balance each other. Um, and then it says, as, as a final little element here, Gigi seems cold, but is actually very enthusiastic and always calmly analyze, an analyzing problems to help everyone sometimes get caught up in emotions when he thinks too much. I can relate to this character a lot. And that's another reason why they do stuff like this, because... They want you as a consumer and a user to relate to their characters in some way, form, or fashion. And a lot of times it's the relationship that you relate to. So I sat down and I was thinking, you know, how in the heck am I going to create an illustration showing these two, um, two character types? So I got to thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and that's what I do. You know, that's part of the GG in me, right? Um, even, even though I've got a lot of UU in me, <laughs> uh, I also have a lot of GG. So I got to thinking, you know, what would be a great, a great illustration that shows teamwork, that shows the different character types, um, you know, in one illustration, but also shows that they're really good friends and they work together to get the job done. So I'm like, you know, I like going camping and hiking and a lot of times I get a little tired and I want to sit down on a log and just chill for a moment. And that's exactly what's happening in this little illustration. I thought it was the cutest thing ever. So they're in the woods and, you know, they're kind of dressed up as hikers. And you have Yu uh, Yu sitting there, you know, just enjoying life. And then you have Gigi um, looking over and just really comforting Yu Yu. So this is the illustration. Um, I've already sketched out uh, the, uh, the the roughs, and what I like to do now is since I'm in Photoshop, here's the full res, not full res, but full saturation. So I've got this on a layer, and I'm going to pull back on the um, intensity slash opacity to where you can actually see through it, and I've added a layer over here on the right-hand side. I'm doing this to show you context, because a lot of times you will see a person do this in time lapse and you have no idea what's going on. Um, and I wanted to make sure you understand what's happening. I did this really rough sketch because again, I got to thinking what is the overall, uh, you know, vision for this particular illustration and these two characters, these two characters working together, two different character types, two contrasting character types, that really every artist kind of has inside of them. You know, you have that passion, that love, that uh, intensity. But then as an artist, a lot of times you get into the thought patterns, you get into those things that really define us and help us grow, you know, 
as an artist, an illustrator, or graphic designer, or sculptor, or whatever. And, you know, these two entities out on an adventure trying to discover new things. So um, that's what's going on. In terms of balance and composition, I do have, and I'm going to do this really quick just to show you again context and how I formulate illustrations. So in the realm of illustration and design, you have what's called the rule of thirds, right? You have your composition that is basically split up into zones because you want to direct the viewer's eye in a way that is attractive. And, you know, y'all, I was, whenever I was coming up in school, this is one of the methodologies they quote unquote teach you as a guide to help direct the viewer's eye to have a pleasant viewing experience of the illustration and tell a story. So you can see that areas of intersection are where the story elements are going to be. You never want to place anything in the center because again, it's it's a storytelling element and placing things in the very center is good whenever you want that to be your complete focus. But since we have two subject matters, I wanted it to be a balance. <clears throat> um, Gigi's a little bit bigger than you, you. So I've made him on the right hand side. And again, he's inter he's on that intersection, uh, uh, little intersection areas to help draw your eye. Um, I've got these elements right here. You see the rock here. You see the the uh, the foliage here pointing, really pointing up to the subject, which basically, if you look, I've even drawn in sort of a quasi um, compositional element here, the triangle composition. So we have these three elements basically drawing your eye to that connection right? That off left connection right here where their where their heads are touching. So that um, is how I kind of come up with the composition. I've split things here. We're going to go and add a layer because I want to go ahead and show you what I did as far as splitting things. And this is important for you guys because I want to make sure again context and how I formulate and sketched out this illustration. So the balance of the subject matter is going to be right around here. You have, again, those rule of thirds, um, the connection right here and the connection right here. So you can see kind of a balance and a symbiosis between those two. And I've got my horizon line off in the distance. Even though you can't see it, it's there, uh, you know, hiding behind all of this stuff. And I've got the uh, log they're sitting on kind of splitting the illustration with the bulk of the two elements uh, in the upper quadrant. So again, these are things that I do whenever I'm drawing and I'm formulating and, and creating the illustration to tell the story of these two characters in this moment. Um, I, I'm putting things to words because that's how we communicate. But at the end of the day, this is important to know, the end of the day, whenever I created this, I was in the moment, similar to what Yu Yu does, and feeling the illustration. So I've been doing this long enough that I kind of feel when things don't work, and uh, instead of analyzing, you know, things uh, to the point where it really causes an issue in my brain, I feel the balance. I see the direction. I can feel the weight of these two characters and the joy or the disdain based upon their gesture and where their arms are, right? He's got a backpack on, he's got a little hat on, so he wants to stay warm. Again, I'm going back to that GG element, which has to do with analytical. And he, you know, looked at his adventure that he was gonna have with Yu that day. He's like, I'm gonna put on a hat. I'm gonna put on maybe a backpack. And he's got his hiking shoes on. <clears throat> and then you have, um, Yu Yu that uh, is kind of a little more free form, maybe threw on a hat and he's got a walking stick and he's just enjoying life. So that being said, I just wanted to give you context. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put you guys on time lapse as I go through and put in the final line for these two characters. And that is going to be a base for my final illustration, just to give you an understanding of what I'm looking at. I'm trying to find an illustration that I've done recently that you can see kind of the style that I'm going for. Okay, so here we go. So we'll do the Yeti Doodle. <clears throat> okay, so as you see, again, I've got 
you know, I've got all that stuff that I was talking about, that triangular uh, composition. I've got, uh, you know, that rule of thirds. Um, but mostly I wanted to show you how the final is probably going to end up looking, you know, very lively, very colorful. You have some nice watercolor brushes in there and texture. So we're going to have some fun today. Uh, even though we're going to be on time lapse, I just again wanted to give you context of how I created an illustration and how exactly I have viewed these two characters and how they are going to be in this moment uh, in this illustration. So enjoy the process. And if I see anything that jumps out to me uh, in terms of technical stuff concerning the tablet, because this is a review of the 1200, of the U1200 pen display. So far, it's been flawless. I haven't had any issues. Nothing's really hung up. Um, the only thing, like I said, that is a personal preference is I would like to see the end of this barrel not so abrupt and rounded. I would like to see more of a taper. Um, but that, again, is my personal preference. So let's go ahead and get you guys on time lapse and wrap up this fun illustration. <laughs>
And here is the final illustration of Yu Yu and Gigi out on a lovely forest drawing adventure. Oh man, I just really enjoyed doing these characters um, for Yugi. You know, whenever I first got the assignment, I looked at the characters and I was kind of lost. But after I started getting into the nuances of who they are, what they represent, man, I had such a good time with this project. So, what did I think of the tablet? First of all, I think the tablet is a great value. You really can't beat a 12-inch tablet with HD with, <clears throat> uh, you know, 1080p. Uh, full HD and then also it's got a laminated screen um, and uh, over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. So one of the things that I kind of ran into <clears throat> whenever I'm doing this particular project is the size constraint. I'm used to drawing on a very large tablet and my personal preference is to have a larger 16 inch minimum. So being on this form factor is something that as a user, you're probably going to have to evaluate if you want to upgrade. They do sell a 16 inch. So for my recommendation, if you can afford the larger tablet, I would definitely go with that. As far as the Pentec goes, um, I originally had this tablet paired with a Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. Uh, not Pro, with the 2360. And um, I had a little bit of an issue because that particular tablet's proprietary Pentec is Wacom, and I think that the driver might have had some hiccups here and there because I couldn't install certain, um, I couldn't install the original Yugi driver. It was interfering, uh, I, I, I believe. It just wouldn't allow me to see this particular device, the XP Pen Quick Key Remote. Um, so I went ahead and I installed the XP Pen driver. Um, and I didn't have any issues. Also, I went ahead just for posterity and accuracy. I switched over to my Microsoft Surface Book. Uh, and I'm uh, sorry, Surface Laptop Studio. And so far, I haven't had any issues. So I've run it on the Samsung device, Galaxy Book 2. And I've run it on the, um, on the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. And as you see, it has no problem with this XP Pen driver uh, window because basically they are the same company they share technology so to get my quick key remote to work I had to install this driver hopefully that won't be too much of a hiccup for you whenever you get this tablet um, you know and if you do have a quick key remote just remember if it's not showing up in the Yugi driver window go ahead and install the latest and greatest from XP pin you shouldn't have an issue um, so, uh, overall, I give this probably an A-, and you're like, well, why not an A+. Plus? Well, first of all, for me, preference, like I said, size, but I can change that and get the bigger one. But also, the pen. This is really where I think that this company uh, needs to improve the technology. The initial activation isn't too bad, but it is rather close. So whenever I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. And then whenever I go back in, I feel like there's a slight hesitation on the pen. And if you look, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. If you look, so here, you can see it's pretty good. But whenever I go to draw, I feel like there's a slight hesitation in the drawing curve and in the, in the, in the overall feel of the pen. And also the barrel of the pen, it just, it feels, you know, not great quality and I would like to see some improvements on the pen it's very light but that kind of works against it because I like to feel a little bit of uh, pencil weight you know even whenever I compare it to like a standard um, Sakura brush pen the brush pen just has a better feel to it and maybe it's because I'm missing that rubber barrel cushion because I'm used to that um, and I'm just, you know, with that taper being so abrupt, I'm not liking that too much. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, overall, in a pinch, this device is literally for just under $200. It's really hard to beat that kind of a value in this form factor at this quality level, right? You, you, you spend your dollars, you want something to last. 
And as you see, the color saturation is absolutely beautiful. So, you know, <laughs> what do they say? Six, six and a half dozen to another or something like that. I think what it is, is it's all those variables that we're looking for in a tablet. You know, this one clicks a lot, clicks on a lot of the boxes, but it's the pen feel for me that is really lacking in terms of um, just overall drawing uh, quality and feel. You know, and like I'm, I'm going through like right here, that cursor as I get to the edge, the cursor is not matching up as much as I would like to the pen. And it just feels like there's a hesitation disconnect. And you know, whenever I compare it to some of the other tablets that I've used, it's probably, like I said, just uh, an A minus. And that really concludes the review of the Yugi U1200 um, pen display tablet, drawing tablet. So overall, I think that it was a good tablet right at that particular price point like i said um just a moment ago i think that uh if you're looking to get into digital art and i've said this before looking to get into digital art kind of dip your pencil into that area this is a good value for you as a um, budding digital um artist or illustrator and don't want to spend you know three four five six hundred seven hundred thousand dollars whatever it is to get the um you know, the latest and greatest. We all think that we need the latest and greatest, uh, incredible expensive tablet, right? And, and we go out and spend those dollars. And then whenever we see somebody doing the same type of illustration and art on a tablet that costs a tenth of the big boys, right? I think that we get a little downtrodden and say, man, why didn't I look at some of those other um, companies, you know, like Yugi, XB Pen, Sense Lab, some of those companies out there that offer great tablets uh, at a very good value. Um, you know, uh, if you're a photographer, if you're a graphic designer, if you're an illustrator, you know, you really have to look at the landscape of today's tablets and say, what is the best value for me? Is this gonna last? You know, I don't know if this tablet would last two years, three years, four years. I typically buy things on a five-year schedule. I want things to last at least five years. You know, especially if it costs um, a decent amount of money, decent, you know, three, four, five, six hundred, eight hundred dollars. And this tablet at just under two hundred dollars really is in that niche that that we as artists, you know, can buy something as a secondary uh, item, you know, to pair with a host machine. Again, this is a pen display, not a standalone. So you need a powerful, a decent, powerful machine that will run an, uh, a, a drawing program such as Photoshop, Illustrator, Krita, Medibang, um, you know, some of those uh, programs that really take advantage of the RAM and the all-inclusive processors that are out there today and, um, you know, and be able to run a tablet like this. So if you're looking for the next level up, I believe the 16 inch is 299. Again, it's pretty much this tablet scaled up to that 16 inch form factor. Me, as an artist, I love bigger tablets. I currently work on a 24 inch tablet um, and I love it. I think it's fantastic. Would I go 32? Probably if they offer it, I'll go 32, but I don't wanna spend you know, an insurmountable amount, insurmountable amount of money on something that would take years for me to recoup the costs. Um, well, not years, it would take months for me to recoup that cost in my business model. So anyway, the Yugi U1200 pin display, great value, really fun drawing. Like I said, the only hang up I had was that pen tech. If they could improve the pen tech just a little bit, this would be a gold star instead of a, uh, instead of a silver star. So that's all I had for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I do have uh, more videos coming up pertaining to reviews. If there's something that you see in the landscape that's coming out that you think that uh, I might need to review, or if you're a possible uh, company that is looking for reviewers, I do this sort of thing regularly. Um, and I do have quite a bit of experience when it comes to tablets and understanding what makes a good drawing experience because at the end of the day, that's what this tablet really needs to do well is draw because that's what it's designed to do and that's what this channel is about so 
thank you guys again. Like and subscribe and share and have an awesome day. Okay? Bye.